How's it going? This is Jason, Sergeant Holmes today, and this is day five of me quarantined inside of my house in Song Song, <laughs> and I can't leave, but at the same time, I was luckily for me, my Air Force recruiter, she was able to jump on a video call with me so we can talk about the options in regards to um, cross-training for my current APC, it's a different one, and like the pros, what comes with that, the GI kicker, and any potential bonuses. So we're gonna talk about that today. And yeah, so, Mass Sergeant Singleton. So right, now, so right now, you're thinking about cross-training into two different AFSCs, right? Yes. Okay, so what we would do is, um, my job would be to make sure that you have the appropriate ASVAB scores for each AFSC that you're trying to go into. Mm -hmm. So I would check the AFECD to make sure that you have the ASVAB scores one and that you meet any other um, requirements, like if they require um, depth perception, anything that you may not currently have, I have to bump that up. Then I would go to that base that you want to go to. So I think right now you're looking at Blackland. Yeah, as the or, closest one, because we that was we were looking at the cybersecurity one. Yeah, so we would go to that base, see if they have it available, and if they do have it available, and you meet all the requirements, then we would block the job because at that time you've turned in what I need, which is your PHA, your four twenty two, and your latest PT test. I already have all those items. Um, when it comes to the GI Bill kicker, that's only for certain jobs. Mm -hmm. So the two AFSCs we talked about, I would have to see if they're both on the list and I bump it up against the list and let you know if they are mm -hmm. um, eligible. And that also goes for each AFSC if they're eligible for the bonus or not. Okay. So um, I'm also telling, um, go ahead. So first question, so if, if I need, if I don't meet the um, ASVAB scores, can I take the test again to try to get a higher score? Yeah, you can always retake the AFCT, mm -hmm. and they currently offer that at the Education Center here at Osan. Okay, great. And for the GI, um, GI Bill kicker, what is that exactly? It's an extra amount of money it's it's gone up a little bit an extra 300 that you get for going to school full-time mm -hmm. and then it goes down if you go half the time and then a quarter of the time but it's only for certain AFSCs okay. so not only do you get your full-time um weekend drill pay you also get a GI Bill kicker on top of that okay you said it's but like, I bumped that up. how much was the, the kicker again the Initial payout is around 300. I'd have mm -hmm. to look it up to see because I know it, it changed and then it goes down to half and then it goes down to a quarter of the amount. Okay, depending uh, on how many classes you're taking, right? That's pretty, pretty dope. Okay, so then you said that it's based off of certain APCs. Is there a reason why? Is that or just, just because? I think it's um, AFSCs that are trying to keep qualified, skilled people in. Um, if there's there's certain AFSCs that we may have a harder time keeping people in, so they're trying to throw in a little bit of an incentive so that they're not always, there's more continuity and not always mm -hmm. having to um, uh, retrain people or, you know, non priors that may not know. There's somebody there who's got that knowledge that can pass it down. So it's, there's always that little bit of incentive when you have an AFSC that, you know, they have a hard time keeping people in. No, all right, that makes sense. So then uh, you said, and also there is bonuses for certain AFSCs in the reserves. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so Next is- our officer analyst. Okay, yeah, I remember you sent me a document talking about that. I think it was more geared towards prior enlisted, like, act people going from active duty to re in reserves, or it was a letter talking about the program for the bonuses for certain agencies. That, yeah, that one that I sent you is for both. It's for non-priors and prior service. Yeah. Okay, great. All right, so other than that, yeah, I mean, so go for tech school, how long, so say like I qualify, I meet all the, I meet all the requirements, 
boom, boom, boom. For tech school, for me, what what would that be like since I'm already prior service? You have a year to go to tech school from the day you in process. So once you go to your first year weekend, you're going to coordinate your tech school date with your unit training manager. Oh, okay. So if you want to go right away, you're just let them know, hey, I'm ready to go right away. And they'll look at the available openings. Or if you need time, because it's a it's a big, you know, it's a big crossover from active duty to reserve. You need time to get some other things in order. You can just let them know, hey, I'm not available now, but I can go, you know, in the summer of 2021, mm -hmm. for example. And while but you do have a year to go. You have a, is that a year? Mm -hmm. Okay, and while you're in tech school, you are still kind of being paid, like as a duty pay, right? Yeah, while you're in tech school, you're still a participating reservist. So you're like learning your job, um, OJT, mm -hmm. hands-on. So you're doing hands-on um, learning. And then tech school is just book work learning of your same job. So I remember we talked about before the IMF or IMA, the way you can do your IMA. whole IMA. So yeah. So me, if I, if I qualify the cross train, then I'll bump down from being a five level into a three level into the new AFC, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. And, but you said to do that program, the IMA, you have to be a five level. When you're doing, when you become an IMA, they're, yeah. they're not taking cross trainees. Uh, so you have to be a gotcha. base B. That's like, cause so, you could be an IMA in your current AFC, but like if you, you're like, ooh, I see they have IMA for, for Intel. You can't just jump in and be an, an Intel IMA because you have to be fully qualified, either mm -hmm. five, seven skill level, um, because you're attached to an active duty unit. Sometimes you're backfill, sometimes you're not, but they're expecting you to be ready to go, ready to do your job. Um, typically, they're not there to teach you your job. You know, they're there to show you how they do things in the office, but they want you to ready to, to pretty much rock and roll. Gotcha. Understand. Yeah. 100%. And so how does leave work? So say like, I know since drill week was like two weeks, like a weekend out the month. <laughs> can you do like, can you, can you take leave for like two months in a row or how is that? Or well, two? there's, um, when you're doing regular, um, or traditional drill weekends, there's no leave because you're only working one weekend a month. Gotcha. So you're not working enough to earn leave. But if your unit puts you on orders over 31 days, then you do have the opportunity to earn leave. If you do earn leave, if you're on orders, you're going to use those leave days before your orders end. Okay. So actively leave. Can, so actively leave doesn't roll over into reserve leave, correct? You have to. No. Okay. No, I tell, I mean, there's some, I mean, I've heard some people tell, you know, applicants that it does, but better safe than sorry. Um, use your terminal leave or sell it um, because if you feel that it's going to just happen the right way and, and, crowd, and it just doesn't, you know, use your leave. It doesn't, um, <laughs> gotcha. okay. it doesn't fold over. Yeah. Okay. So I uh, separate, how to avoid having a break in service? and transition over to reserve. So how, that part is kind of fuzzy because it, it, in that letter you talked about, it talks about as long as you don't have a break in service. So how do you avoid doing a break in service while transitioning from active duty to the reserves? Well, with working with me, it's, it's really working with your recruiter. Don't be lazy or don't um, turn in the forms on time and your recruiter is going to be on you to say, hey, I need this, I need that. Um, make sure you're letting them know, hey, this is where I want to go. Um, the problems I see a lot of time is people are indecisive about where they're going to end up separating and what job they want. I've had a few people who've said they want to do this job, and at the last minute they wanted to do a different job. I turn in the application, and then they don't qualify, so then they have to be sent up for the Surgeon General's approval, which cause the which may cause them to have a break in service, but. Really just work with your recruiter, turn your paperwork on time, answer their calls, like, um, because I don't want you to have breaking service, you know, bringing you in and, and getting you a job obviously benefits us as well. So mm -hmm. it's all about, um, it's, a, it's like a teamwork thing. As long as you're working with your recruiter, there shouldn't be a breaking service. But if there's those last case 
scenario scenarios where someone's like, oh, you know what, I think I do want to join. That might cause a break in service if we can't find a position. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So one of the questions I have, so say, say like if I do cross train A for C or even into a, the same A for C that I'm in, but the only position that's open is a tech sergeant position, not a staff sergeant position. How does that work out? I can put you in a staff or tech slot, so that's okay. Okay. So if, if you, and so you put me in a tech slot, I still maintain the current staff sergeant rank that I'm holding out in active duty, or do you get the tech yes. sergeant? Okay. So you eventually, you eventually pin on tech, but not like right away. It's always up to the commander. Gotcha. So the good thing is, hey, you got a tech slot. That's you know that's good, obviously, but it you know it's not like you're immediately going to pin it pin it on. Mm -hmm. So that leads me to the probably other question too. So how does promotions work, and how does PT test work in the reserves? Promotions will work with um, since there's no testing, so basically it'll determine it'll depend on what slot you're sitting in mm -hmm. for your promotions and making sure you have your PME done. And then for PT testing, we PT test the same as you guys. So, um, or is it a 90 and above? Yeah, 90 and above um, every year and anything less, I think up to a 70 is everything every six months. Gotcha. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. I, well, Thank under you. under I always get 90, so. <laughs> under 90 is yeah every six months. Okay, every so six months. so are, we're the same like you guys when it comes to testing for a PT. So, since we do drill once a once a month, so you you do your PT test on one of your drill drill days. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And it would, drill PT test either Saturday or Sunday of the drill weekend, and in the morning or afternoon. Okay. I used to do mine like at eight thirty or yeah, around eight thirty. Gotcha. Okay. Well, is there anything I left out or that you any like tips you like to give for anyone that's current active duty Air Force in the Osan or Kunsan area and they're interested in going into the reserves? Um any or any common things that you you deal with that you wish people would not do? <laughs> Um, the only thing is pick up the call, phone if your recruiter calls, let her know or him know um, what your intentions are. I understand people change their mind. We're all adults. Just communicate. No, not a big deal. And um, just turn in the forms on time. I mean, that, the biggest thing I see here is um, kind of people kind of drag their feet when it comes to turning in their forms. So I'm constantly like following up on um, you know and it's fine it's my job but you know it makes things a little easier they you know turn yeah. in their forms gotcha too. gotcha and i'll have your contact information below for anyone that's interested in hitting you up and thank you for your time that's what i'm saying you have a you stay safe <laughs> and, <laughs> and i'll stay here in my house for the, the next <laughs> nine days yeah. so nine days. <laughs> Other than that, thank you and thank I'll you. Talk to you later, right? All right, bye. Bye.